Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it happens to be in your current location. I know I only have about nine subscribers or so, but I wanted to take a second, kind of go over my motivation, what I plan for the channel, so on and so forth. So I've been around YouTube passively watching videos for a while. Every once in a while, I would come across a neat VHS tape. I thought others might be interested in watching, so I'd pop it up so others could enjoy it. Back when I started doing this, I just kind of was winging it. I tossed a name up, threw the tapes up, didn't really think about it. Lately, I've been wanting to become more professional, along with the fact that there's somebody else on YouTube with the same name, and way more content, and way more subscribers than me. So I wanted to do a little bit of rebranding, and I've settled on the VHS Reviver. I also want to use this as a chance to go back and re-encode some of my earlier uploads and kind of get the best quality and a more correct aspect ratio so I can preserve them the best I can and the best they deserve. Now I know there's other channels on YouTube that tackle preserving commercials mostly. They do a great job. There's people like 80's Commercial Vault, VHS Goodies WA, and Shifty3 Retro TV. So since they've already got that covered, I wanted to focus more on odd and obscure things that were only released on VHS for the most part. You know, movies that never came to DVD, promotional tapes, whether it be for a network station or a video game, training videos that aren't exercise videos, unless some members are interested in that. Some of you have probably already seen, you know, the content currently on my channel, and I like to head more in that direction. Now, while I enjoy being able to preserve content that's a little more different and unique, it's partially because the thrift stores that I tend to frequent don't usually carry blank tapes. I tend to not find blank tapes unless I go to something like a flea market. So if I'm on vacation or happen to go visit family a couple hours away, I have a bad habit of planning all the thrift stores and a flea market or two along the way if I can do so. Now, after I'd uploaded some of my own captures, I decided to browse the VHS subreddit. I happened to find a post about an interesting tape that a user had found while out at a thrift store. I had asked if they were going to upload it for others to watch. They were kind enough to send me a link to where someone else had already uploaded it, but they also mentioned that they did not know how to capture their own tapes. This inspired me to take a moment to go over how I capture my tapes. I hope that this will help others out there to preserve their collection, whether it be some obscure, not yet preserved movie, or a family trip to Disney World from 1991. Now my current setup involves three steps, capture, cut, and compress, each needing their own tool. To accomplish the most important part, we will need to take a look at a capture device. These come in two variants, cards and boxes. Personally, to do VHS work, I prefer the box type. More specifically, the model shown here that is usually referred to as the YK940. Before we take a look, I want to mention that I don't endorse this particular seller. He just happened to be the one that came up first. You always need to do a little bit of research on both sellers and items before you make an eBay purchase. After trying a few capture devices, I believe this one is the best one for VHS capture. It offers the composite in, and if something happens to the cable that it comes with, it's easy to get a hold of another one. It also offers both USB and micro SD storage options, on top of being able to connect to your PC. Other capture boxes tend to come with a more odd looking cord that handles composite and or component video, no remote, or only the ability to record directly to a PC with no USB storage options. If I happen to come across any other that do VHS work well and pick them up, I will do a compare and a contrast video so we can see the difference. Now that we have our hands on some hardware here, we can move along to the actual capture. The cord situation should be pretty self-explanatory. After everything is hooked up, we will want to insert a micro SD card or USB flash drive. Next, we'll turn everything on. First, turn on the VCR, then the capture box, and finally the display. If you get a no signal message bouncing around, that means you're on the wrong input for the capture box. You have to hit the source button a couple times until you get to AV. You'll have HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and AV. Once everything is correctly set, you should see the screen you would see when your VCR is powered on. From here, we can press the menu button and proceed through the settings. The important settings also have their own dedicated button on the remote. First up is the system time. The system time ends up becoming the file name for the video being recorded. There's also an option to set a recording schedule, but I've not used it myself. Following that is the on-screen language. 
Mine is already defaultly set to English. Below that, we have the aspect ratio. For VHS tapes, you're going to want to keep it as 4.3, but it does support 16x9 as well as some zooming options. There is a 4.3 and a 16x9 button on the remote. Moving along, HDMI CEC will allow you to control the box with a different remote, but I make sure to leave this off. Moving over to the remote, we can adjust the mic input volume. For recording tapes, I leave this at zero. We can also adjust the audio volume. I have not tested if this controls the sound volume of the sound being recorded to the file, sound coming out of the headphone port, or both. I usually leave this at 38 or so out of 40. We can then adjust it afterwards when we get around to editing the file. The bitrate key will allow us to select the output file bitrate. I tend to leave this set to 16. I know it is a bit of overkill for a VHS tape, but I like to get the best file quality possible. We will end up compressing it later. The limited option will create a new file every 2 gigabits or so. The unlimited option will record one single file. The box supports the FAT32 and NTFS file formats. FAT32 has a 2 gigabit per limit file limitation, and NTFS does not. So, if you wanted to, you could record to an NTFS formatted drive as one single large file. I would advise against this, however. I tried this a few times. Once, I let an entire movie record as one long file. When then going to edit the file, the audio track for it kept falling out of sync for some reason. So, I would set it to limited. That way, if something does happen to a clip segment, we can go back and record a section if need be, and not have to start over and record the entire video from the beginning. 720p and 1080p both have their own button. When switching between them, it might default to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Thankfully, there are also buttons on the remote to switch between the aspect ratios. Lastly, there is a snapshot button on the remote that captures a still in JPG format. That is what I used to take pictures of the different menus. Once we have all the settings sorted, we're going to want to make sure that nothing is displayed on the screen and press record. A recording indicator will come up on screen. Sometimes a can't find device error will come up and the record button might need to be pressed again. Let's give the recording notification time to go away because any menus or notification from the capture box will appear in the actual recording. Once it does so, Insert a tape in the VCR and let it play. It is a good idea to rewind it completely to give the VCR's play time, remaining time, and other on-screen indicators to go off-screen before the actual video starts. Now, we have to let the video play through. Once the video is done, press stop to end the recording. Power the device off and then remove your storage media. Now, take the storage media over to a PC. We will end up with files like shown here. They will have the date set in the system like earlier. And if we use the limited setting, the next file in the set will have an underscore one, two, and so on. The next thing we will need to do is to move on to the cut stage. While I like to use a program to cut and then another one to compress, depending on your software choice, you might be able to do this with a single program. For this example, to cut the file, we are going to use the NCH Software's video pad. A trial for the software can be downloaded from their site. After downloading, installing, and selecting new project, we can drag and drop all the file segments for the tape. Once dragged over, we can click the file to be edited. In this example, I'm going to cut a commercial from a pre-recorded tape. First, we're going to want to find the start of the commercial. If this was a movie, you would of course want to start at the beginning of the movie. Once we have the cursor where we would like to begin, we will want to click Set Start. Then we can drag the cursor to the end of the commercial segment or the end of the movie and click Set End. After it is set, we will want to click the little arrow next to Add and select Place at Start. If working with multiple 2 gigabit files that are broken into pieces in a movie or a single commercial break and it goes into the next file segment, we will want to make sure to put the set end at the very end of the file. We can use the go to end button near the play button and then click set end to make sure that no content is being missed at the end. After that, click the little arrow and then click to add the segment where it needs to go. Then click the next file in line and repeat the 
the process with the set start at the beginning and set end where it needs to be. The program will line things up with no gap as long as the split segments are placed right next to each other. Once all the segments are set, we're going to want to click the export video arrow and then select lossless file. I select lossless file because when using this particular box to capture video, it records the moving picture area in a 4.3 aspect ratio, but it also records the black bars. So then it will end up making the actual file 720p and 16.9. In the newest version shown here, it allows you to select to crop the video. The older version that I paid for and use on my regular machine does not offer this. It also seems like you can only crop to a list of resolutions or set a custom one with no auto cropping settings available. Because of this, after the cut video is exported, I like to put it into a free video encoder called Handbrake. Handbrake will then auto crop the black bars out and we will end up with a video in the 4-3 aspect ratio without the widescreen bars. Before running it through Handbrake, I also like to set it to encode in H.265. This is a newer video codec that requires a little more computer power to get things done in a realistic time frame, but it keeps the video looking decent while cutting down on the overall file size thanks to better compression. Once Handbrake finishes, we will end up with a fair looking, better compressed, digitally preserved VHS tape in a more correct aspect ratio. Before I end the video, I would like to mention that users take a look at the Lost Media Wiki. There are some lost movies and TV shows that one of you might just happen to have to have recorded off TV while it was airing back then. This is how the BBC was able to recover some of the lost Doctor Who episodes back when the original Doctor Who was airing. Back around that time, TV stations would wipe and reuse their tapes. It was expensive to store old ones and then buy new ones. Once Doctor Who became popular and fans wanted to see older episodes, the BBC had to reach out and find people who happened to have recorded them off TV. While a lot of them were recovered thanks to the reach out, some episodes are still partially or completely lost to this day. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Preservation of media is important and I hope I was able to help at least one person start saving media. If you know of any other hardware that happens to capture VHS tapes well, feel free to discuss it in the comments.